There we go. I just need to make sure. If I go look here, my streams. I'm just checking out YouTube, making sure everything looks good. To, ooh. Okay, so YouTube's a little bit behind, I think. Um, yeah, I guess we're live. Um, we're looking at we're looking at our. I just updated our blog. So, um, let me pull that over here. So here is our wonderful, beautiful blog. Um, the glob option as has been deprecated in favor of query. Please update as raw to query raw import default. Interesting. I wonder where that's coming from. Oh, look at that. YouTube caught up. Well, no, they're a little bit behind. I can see, I can see that stuff changing there. Kind of funny. Um, but I'll stop distracting myself with YouTube, and we'll get into this. Um, wait a second. What happened here? There's a problem here. The problem is we don't have all of our styles and themes and stuff going on. Hmm. What happened? Let's go take a look. What did I break? Because I'm good at breaking things. Um, okay. So if we go take a look at the app component, the app component brings in the router outlet. And that's fine. That all looks good. We've got our theme still here, so um I'm gonna need to update that. Otherwise, copilot isn't gonna work for me. So um let's let's take a look at the header component, because that's where um that's where all of this stuff comes from. So in the header component, we've got our metadata, we've got our template, here's our welcome, and our theme selector. That's fine. Our app component just has the router outlet. Um, so our home page is the page that would have the header on it. And it's not loading the header. We're getting the my blog, but we're not getting the header. Um, let's just try building it again and see if like the V needed to update or so. Serving on 4200. If I refresh here, actually, what we should do is go look at the console. Oh, we need to turn on client hydration. Is that the problem? We're doing SSR rendering and I don't have SSR turned on. Um, that could very well be my issue. Um, so to do SSR, we need to go look in our app config. And there is provide client hydration. It is there. Um, interesting. So the question is, why does Angular not see it as there? OK, 
Hydration was requested on the client, but there's no serialized information present. Oh, the server. I, I'm looking. I'm looking at the wrong place. Um, I don't think. Do we have server? So, in a server. And there's just a route there, but. Um. I'm not running the um So that's all there. So this is the main that starts up the application. This is the server itself. Um, we weren't having problems with this before. I did upgrade um, just before the stream. Um, On our Vite config in here, public dir source public SSR, no external. So in our routes, find event handler from H3. We not have H3 anymore. Oh, we're using Zod, that's cool. So the, the TRPC stuff here is fine, but looks like this hello route, but This route, we, we really aren't even using um, at all. So here we're importing app component config. We aren't in prod mode and we bootstrap our component and when we render, we call that and we return HTML. Um, That's testing. But the analog plugin with our routes pre render SSR set to false on our analog routes. So I'm not even server side rendering these. Um, Let's comment this out and just see what happens. So we've removed that. Now we've recompiled. Now if I refresh, we're good. But now I've lost. That is so weird. So very weird. What is going on here? Um, is 
this is a change over what it was before. I guess the first thing we should do is go look at analog JS. And inside of analog JS, go to the docs and um, let's go look on GitHub. I probably should have done this before I upgraded. Um, let's go look at the change log here. Remove option from Angular generator. Add support for import attributes. So, what GIF best describes this? Josh, huh? This is the import attribute stuff. Um, It import attributes exposes is a special case. This removes existing functionality that supported adding analog components to imports if the import was directly an analog file. Um, so this is a breaking change. It probably broke our header. Um, let's go take a look at the actual commits or the file changes. If we can figure out. So here now they're doing with analog imports, with analog imports. So it looks like we have to add these with analog imports to our stuff to get them to work. Import goodbye from goodbye.analog export goodbye. You can get a new migrations.json, but this stuff is all, um, so the analog files are all experimental um, so we can probably hmm. let's go take a look at our header um, so in our header are we using anything we are using the theme store and I think we need to if I'm reading this code right, um, we need to with analog imports um, so that this works. So do we do with analog imports? Is that going to work?
we got the theme store. Um, we got the theme. Where do we use? Oh, we use the theme and the exposes. Go take a look at the code here and find an exposes. Exposes math. So import hello. I like goodbye my service. Well, math already exists. Um, that's just on the browser. So my funk. Okay. So we have to do with analog exposes on this one. Um, but I remember reading about this, and we actually have to go here. Um, we have to do import um, and here, and then we're going to do it from um, dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash themes um, and then we do with analog exposes so we've got that we got that after next render and inject I'm curious, do I need to do something special with those? We're going to have to go take a look in here. Um, after next render, oh, right there from Angular Core. So that one looks like we're probably OK. We aren't having to do anything special. Um, Yeah, it looks like the after next render is fine. Um, but let's look at inject. Um, so injectable looks like we can do it just fine. And it looks like inject we don't have to do anything special with. Um, so that should clean up our header so that it gets the proper stuff and works again. Um, so then the next thing is the actual home component. Um, And so this is our home component. Um, here we're importing header, but if I remember, there's a change we need to make. Um, components. Yeah, with the analog imports. Well, no, yeah, analog imports, yep. Um, so here we should be able to say with analog imports. And that should hopefully fix everything up. The glob option as has been deprecated in favor of query. Where do we have as in here? We don't have it. I don't know where that glob option is coming from, but I'm curious if we've managed to fix our application. Um, let's restart the server and just see. Um, There we go. Our theming's back. Our selector's back. And we got to go on a little bit of a trip, um, just figuring out what broke, right? Um, when you're doing early access stuff, right, pre-release stuff, um, you can run up against things like this. Um, 
So getting comfortable with going in and, you know, tracking down changes um, is helpful. Um, and, and luckily, um, so this was done by Josh, um, Joshua Maroney. Um, so luckily he had a whole bunch of examples in his code showing how this works. Um, very helpful. So thank you, Josh. Really appreciate that. Um, it made it easy for me to fix the site. So we now have our, our home component with our blog in place. Um, so it's time to kind of think about what we want our blog to look like um, and how we want it to work. And there are a couple of layouts that we could probably use uh, that I'm trying to think my way through. Um, So right now we've got our header and then we've got our blog. We should probably have like, so I'm trying to think, right? How, how I want the blog to look. Um, and let's go look at Xcala draw. Actually, I need to make sure really quick. Okay. That one is fine. Um, this is walking through, you know, boxing and unboxing from a stream a little while ago and what that means, right? So um, let's reset the canvas um, and let's get, you know, let's get a page up, right? So this is our page. And right now on our page, we've got this header at the top. Um, and we'll fill that in. Great. So there's our header. Um, I'm trying to think how I want the blog to look. Um, and if we look at um, a couple of you know, big blogs, right? So like angular.io, we go here and we look at their blog. Um, so their blog has the, well, theirs is done on medium, right? So, um, it's got like the main article here and then a couple smaller articles like this. And that's not bad. Um, not a bad way to do it. Um, so they've got kind of like, um, I mean, this, this part here could be, because we aren't going to need the login stuff. I, I guess if we add comments, we might add that later. Um, but for now, we'll just have the header here. Um, and then we'll, we'll follow kind of this design. So within, um, within our design, what we'll do is we'll have, um, this will be, our main, um, main article. And then underneath it, um, we will have, well, um, basically have, you know, sub articles. Um, so something like this. So if we look at this, we've got kind of a, a layout here, right? That this is this would be our article container. So this is our header. We have an article container here, and within that article container, we have the main article, and then we have um, we have you know smaller articles below it, um, and this isn't. I mean, this isn't a difficult layout to make, so I think it's a good way to go. Um, yeah, I like that. Um, let's go back to the app. And so we've got our welcome. 
And then we want our container inside of our welcome to contain the main article and then some smaller articles underneath it. And we'll generate some static articles and things like that. Um, so yeah, let's let's do that. Um, and we can also use image optimization and things like that because um, we'll be loading some images. So we'll be using the image tag also from Angular um, as we go forward. Um, let's figure that out, right? So right now we've got it set as a class block. Um, we're going to make it a class flex. Um, and then we want it to be a flex column. Yep. Um, and we want it to be, um, well, here our header is going to have a class um, of flex none. Um, and then our next component, and for right now, we can just make our, we'll give this a class um, of border. We'll give it an accent border. Um, we'll give it a padding of two. Um, and we will also give it um, flex grow. So this should grow to fill everything, and then this should not grow. Um, so if we go take a look, we're here, and um, if we inspect this, our header stayed the same size, our border, our H1 did not grow. Um, oh, that's because the home is not taking up the full size. Um, so, oh, what's the Tailwind class to do both? I think there's like a um, tailwindcss.com. Um, and if we go into the docs and we search um, height, um, width, full. So in height, we, we, we could do height full and that would be fine. Um, we could also do like SVH or LVH. Um, those might be good. Um, we'll, we'll probably have to play with those because as this scrolls, um, no, if we do the layout right, um, then the scrolling will only happen here and we won't have to make this header piece sticky. Um, So we want to, and let's, let's make this a margin so that it comes in from the edge. Um, and we need to make it a border solid, I believe. Yep. I should do that. Um, and so now we should be able to see am I missing border-wise here? Here's my margin. Um, I don't know. But let's let's fix the. Um, so for right now, we can do height full, width full. And I think, I think you can even do something like HW. I think you can do that. I think I saw a tip for that on Twitter. Yeah, there we go. No. I make this H dash full. It's a height of 100%, but this router, I don't believe has, if I do height 
100% here. Um, does that fix it? No. Because really we aren't nested inside of the router, are we? Let's refresh. The router opens and ends there, but this should wait. Oh no, it does. The HW4 works. So if we look, um, Oh, no, 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 it doesn't. I was looking at the wrong thing. Um, see, this one's growing. This one is not. It's staying on the context. On the content. Um, and if we do heightful width um is that going to work there we go so the hw full didn't work but this does um i swear there was a way to do height and width together Um, so we might want to do like, um, DVH, the dynamic viewport height, um, for like phones and things like that, or the large, there, <sighs> we'll have to experiment and see which ones work on the, um, on the emulators. Um, but there are the smallest viewport height, the largest viewport height, or the dynamic. Um, and depending on the phone, the sticky stuff may or may not work, but I don't know if we need to worry about that right now. Um, but anyway, this works. So setting that full and full, um, and then... Um, Setting this as having no flex, and then this one to be flex grow. Um, when we look now, our our blog fills up the whole part, and the header only takes the part that it needs to take. Um, so we're good there. Uh, so what we should do is replace this H1 that says my blog um, with an actual um, blog content container hey dev x man thank you uh welcome to the welcome to the stream hey tooks good to see you too um you know thank you for joining it's good to have you guys here feel free to ask questions we're working in analog today we're working with dot analog files we had to make a couple of changes um early on um but let's let's add another component right um so if we look that the header component dot analog, um, we're, we're going to add another one. Um, and so we'll need to add a few things. The cool thing about um, dot analog files is that we can go, um, you know, we've got our pages here and then where do we put our components? Um, our header component is under the home component. Um, we've got the home page and then where does this sit? Header component and then the home page. as the home directory. It's 
So interesting. So under here, um, if we want to add a new file, um, our new file, we can call it our um, article um, dot con uh, article dash container dot component dot analog. So we've got an analog file here, um, and really we only need a template tag. Um, and our template needs a type on it. No, it doesn't. If it's HTML, it doesn't need a type. Um, so here we can just go and add our template, and here we can add our H1 class back, right? Um, and sure, why not? Um, there we go. And so now in the home page, we can take this blog out. Um, and here we can just add in our um, our article container. Um, and we've got that. I don't know if self-closing tags work. We can try it with um, self-closing tags and see what happens. Um, they didn't work before. Maybe they've been fixed, uh, but we need to import it. So we just say, hey, import article container. Yep, with the analog import. And that with analog imports is the important part there. Um, that is what allows analog to expose it to the container. Um, and let's... Let's do some stuff here with this. Um, so to be able to give like um, host properties, right? We have to be able to use define metadata, um, which means we need a script tag. Um, so we can just come up to the top and we can just say, hey, we want a TS um, script um, type or language. Language equals TS. Um, great. And there's our script tag. Um, and then we are going to... Um, did we have to import to find metadata here? I don't think we did. Yeah. So we can just say, hey, we want to define, um, define metadata. Um, and inside of our metadata, we're just going to give a host class here. Um, and this is going to be um, a grid class. Um, yeah, we'll do grid. Um, and we'll do... Um, We'll do, so we've got, we'll call it like a bleed on the side. That will be um, one column. Then we'll have the central um, stuff that'll be two columns. Um, and then we'll have a bleed on the right-hand side. Um, so we're gonna do grid calls um, four. We're gonna do a gap. Yeah, gap four sounds fine. Um, and we're going to do BG, um, we're going to do BG dash primary. I think that's what we want, right? We're just going to give the, so that we can see it as we design it, we're going to give it background color. Um, so this is our home. We can see the flex here on our home. Um, and then here we can see our header as a flex and then our article container. Um, our article container got added. So the self-closing tags work, um, which is good. That means that they've been fixed since we last did it. 
Um, so we can go back to our homepage. Um, and we can also make this self-closing, um, which is awesome. But our article container didn't get the grid. What did I do wrong here? Oh, it's just lang. It was even giving me a warning there. Um, so now if we recompile this, we go take a look. Uh-oh, I've broken something. What? What did I break? Um, let's try this again. For whatever reason, sometimes you've just got to restart the analog server. Um, so there we go. It restarted, and no, we're still broken. So the JIT compilation still fails. Um, What if we make these like that again? Oops. There's that. There's that. And let's do that. And, um, and we're back. And we've got primary color. We go inspect this. So we give our article container also um, with full height, full. Now it should take up the whole thing. Um, and we can also see the grid here, um, which is nice because we can see the grid lines. Um, if we want to do some nice grid line stuff. Um, but for right, now we want to we want to resize our grid um, so we want to make our our left hand side of the grid and the right hand side maybe make these like 5% on um on a large view and on mobile view um i don't know maybe we probably still do 5%. Um, what we probably will wind up doing is making articles span the whole thing on a mobile view, uh, but we probably want something off the side anyway. Um, let's go take a look here. Um, rather than primary, let's do a secondary here um, just to make it easier to see. Um, and we'll add a padding of four to it also. Um, and we'll add border accent, border solid. Um, did I get the full solid there? It did. Okay. Let's see. If we go take a look, it looks horrible right now, especially with that beautiful my blog on it. Um, that is actually very, very difficult to see. Um, so first things first, we should go take a look at grid, right? In um, There's border radius, border width. Okay, so I need a border width on it too, also. But um, transitions, interactivity, SVG. Where's grid in here? Grid template rows. 
So Flexbox and Grid. Um, we've got grid rows. We've got four rows. Um, grid row start and end is nice. Um, um We read template columns. That's fine. Oh, that's the problem here. Um, So we, we, like the grid template columns is fine, um, but hmm. yeah, we're going to need to fix this up. Um, and um, see CSS grid um, designer. Yeah, the CSS grid layer generator. I use this one a lot. So uh, we're going to do four columns. Um, we're going to do one row for right now. Um, and, you know, we can do like five pixels for right now to see it. Um, and then the row gap, we don't care. Um, actually, this one's not that good. We hmm. yeah, this is just doing a repeat for fractions. Um this is the one that I typically use. Um so if we add this one and We'll do like 5% here. Um, you know what? Let's do it based on EMs, right? So 4 EM there. And then this last one can also be EMs and 4 EMs. This will give us a nice off the side here. Um, we can also see that, you know, this one, um, we can call this our... Um, main article um, and then whoops nope our main article will go there um, and then you know what we we really only need two um, and then we can give it padding um, so we can give our gap of like one EM and one EM, right? Um, and then off the side, yeah, that'll work. And then we can give padding off the side. And that, that'll that be better than what I was trying to do. Um, I was trying to be sneaky, but I'm not ever going to have something that flows outside of the grid. Um, if we do, then I would do that. Um, Yeah. So we can already see here, right? We do a display grid. We've got one fraction, one fraction. Um, and then, you know, we could do template areas too. Um, let's 
So really, we only need a grid calls of two. Um, and then we can do a margin. Um, we do an XY margin of like, we'll try like 16 um, and see what that looks like, right? Um, oh, the other thing I want to do here is, whoops, let's make sure we've got <clears throat> width full and height full. Um, so that it fills everything, right? Um, please, I have a question. I'm working on an app. The problem is that each component has eight megabytes and a total size when running of 85 megabytes. I don't have any idea. Are you working in Angular Dev DevX, man? Um, that's crazy. That's really crazy. Um, each component is eight megabytes in size. Um, if if you're working in Angular, you you are working in Angular. Um, are you what version of Angular are you using? Because that one is that one's really shocking to me. Actually, that it's that big. Um, very shocking. Um, like if we look at, uh, I guess it doesn't really show us too well here. Um, but like if I do pnpm nx build angular dash blog, it'll give us an idea of like the size of everything here. Um, so yeah, if, if you look, um, we're like in the KBs here, but obviously my app isn't that big, um, but you know, it's tiny. Um, you, su you suspect ng models. Um, do, you, do you know how to run um, the Webpack bundle analyzer? And is this an Angular CLI or um, that's just crazy? You're new to Angular. That's that's fine. Um, you know, everybody started somewhere. I don't think it's the ng models. Um, do you have this project? Um, so you did the web analyzer. Um, do you have the project up on like GitHub or something? Is it something that I can look at? I'd be happy to take a look at the code for you um, and see if I can see anything crazy right off the bat. Um, there we go. Oh, that's hideous. That's really hideous. Um, let's take this background color off of it. That's hideous. Um, What is going on here? We inspect this. So it's got a width of full, a height of full, which we expect. But my grid. So what is MX16 doing for us? Yeah, margin left of 4M.
Hmm. Each component is eight megabytes. If I could see some code or like a screenshot or something, um, I could probably help better. Um, why is a margin? There we go, we've got our padding on it. Um, now our grid's gonna sit there and it's gonna have a padding on the side. Um, so that'll work fine there. Um, So we want our main article to span two columns and then every other article will just be placed across this way. Um, one thing we can do is take this border stuff off. We don't need it. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. DevX man, if if you have um, anything to share, I, I I don't know. Um, I'm curious. Can I actually pin this today? No, of course not. Why would that work? Um, but yeah, if you if you got something you can show DevX man, I I'd be able to probably help you better. Um, as it is right now, I'd just be guessing, and I don't know that my guesses would be that good. Um, I'll see this. Hmm. So we've got this in place. And this is the nice thing about um, using the dot .analog files. This is all I need for this class. Um, and really, I don't even need this. I could add this in as styles and use the host pseudo selector. Um, and we wouldn't even need the script tag and the defined metadata. Um, so you know, this, this isn't even really necessary. Um, but you know, it, it's nice to have like one tiny file, um, and it generates our components for us. Um, we've got our article container. Um, let's get our main article on the page, um, and then we'll we'll add a couple of smaller articles. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Um, So here we're going to add another new file. Um, this new file, we're going to call it um, our main article dot component dot analog. Um, and inside of here, um, we're, we're going to go, we'll go the other way, right? So we'll add our template. Um, and we're just going to put H1. Um, no, this is my main article. Um, and um, again, we're going to use a script tag. Lang equals TS. Um, we, we aren't going to do grid here. Um, it's going to be a display block. So it'll have block. Um, it will also, oh, did I not add this ending script tag? There we go. 
So now we've got our display block. Um, we'll give it a border um, to border um, secondary. Um, and here, now we want to make it span. Um, so we can say span two, I believe. Um, and we can say width full. We can say, we'll give it like a height of, um, I don't know, what do we want to do? Like, we can do a height of 33%. Um, so there, there are a couple of ways to do heights like that, right? Um, if we go take a look here, um, height, um, there, with height, we can do things like this where they're fixed, um, but there are also uh, dynamic heights. Nope. Um, we can use percentages. Um, So the, these are these are pixel based heights, but we don't want that. Um, I guess we can use. Oh yeah, there they are. H one dash three or one slash three. We can do H one slash three. That'll be a third of our height, and that should um, give us um, – oh, I didn't add it. I'm like, what's going on here? So if we go back to our home or our article container, inside of here we've got this H1. Um, if – in our script, we import, um, yep, main article. Yep, that's exactly what we want. Um, and here we can just add um, main article. And, you know, we, we may, um, this border solid doesn't mean anything, but we can do a border two here, and that will do something. Um, now, if we take a look, um, so my main article, so my blog, if we go look, done something weird here. There's our header. Here's our article. Within our article, we can see the grid. Um, Oh, I didn't do grid rows. I didn't do grid rows auto. That's my problem. So if we go back and look at grid rows, um, grid template rows, um, can I not do grid auto flow? This is a dense auto flow. Grid calls three, grid rows three. Um, I think we just want grid flow call on our stuff. Um, so we can just do grid dash flow dash call. Because what I actually expected to have happen was that um, first one to move to the bottom. Um,
What does grid flow call do? Grid auto flow row. Um, CSS grid designer. This one's the good one. Um, and grid template rows. Um, There should be implicit grid. That's what we're looking for. Grid rows auto. Grid auto rows. Yeah, auto rows auto. That's what we're looking for. Um, that's hilarious. Auto dash rows dash auto. There we go. And yeah, DevX man, I I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, if if you have something to share, feel free to. Um, Yeah, if, if you need help. Um, there's that one, there's this one in here. We've got our H1, and span two, what does span two do? That, I may have done it wrong, and that's why it's not um, jumping. Um. We go back and look at the Tailwind stuff. Um, here, template columns. Oh, it's call dash span dash two. Um, The other thing we should do is take all of this stuff off of the host um, and move it onto the article itself. Um, because this shouldn't care how big it is. Um, it should just care about, I don't know. So this should be call dash span dash two. So there we go. Um, we go back. Let's go take a look at. Yeah, YouTube's not on ad break. Twitch isn't either. I'm not going to see ad breaks. That's my problem. Um, but oh, and we were done. So never mind. 
Um, but we're back. Let's go take a look at what we've what we've accomplished. There we go. This is what I was expecting to see. Um, was it the you know the the blog would be at the top, and then uh, my main article would be down here. Um, it's interesting. Did I add a margin to this? I did. I was like, those don't look right. Um, now, if we take a look, um, now they line up. And my main article, is that really 33% tall? I guess it is. It's 33% of the remaining percentage. Um, because here it's bigger than up there. So making it 33% um, isn't necessarily useful. And this one, why is this one so big? What we should really do is have the top be the main article, have it take up the 33%, and then everything below it fill in as needed. Um, and I think we can do... So the way we would do this in CSS is um, we could go back to an explicit grid and add a row of um, 33%. And then an implicit grid. can't do that. You can't do that. You probably can. I just don't know how to do it. So, um, but what we can do is swap these around. Um, Oh, it's 33% of the row. So if we were to add another row, this would get smaller. Um, we don't want the rows to be auto. We want them to be min, I believe, because we want them to be the min content. Um, that will allow... Nope. Um, grid auto rows. These are min contents.
Um, A CSS grid fixed first row auto rows. So we don't want auto rows. What we want is um, How to set the first row to fixed height and then distribute height for dynamic number of rows. Use grid auto rows. Grid template columns that. Grid template rows. First one is 20 pixels and the rest are all one fraction. So we go take a look. So we can say we want grid template rows of Grid rows for grid flow call flows like that. Our subgrid. But is there a way to apply? There we go, our arbitrary values. So we can just do grid rows. Grid rows one, but down here, grid template rows. Um, can I do I'm just do auto rows auto? That's no auto rows. Um, and here we can do, we can do like, um, 20% and we can do grid rows, um, and have the top one be 33%, um, and that should fix our problems. Kind of. Yeah, because now the top is much bigger than the smaller, or the 
the articles themselves. Uh, but now we don't need um, this H one third here. We don't need that at all, and I don't think we need this either. Uh, it's automatically going to fill up whatever we tell it to fill, because we're in a grid. Um, nope, I'm wrong. Um, So what's going on with my grid then? The article container needs to be full. Um, so this this does need a height of full, and probably a width of full just to be safe. These ones don't need to be. So now, if we go take a look, there we go. Um, yeah, things are looking good. Um, oh, there, I was actually able to paste something or tag. Or, why did that work that time? The annoying thing is that I can't unpin it once I've pinned something. I've got to wait for it to go away. Um, does that show up over on YouTube too? It does. Interesting. I don't know what's going on with the pin stuff. Um, oh, and there. Where did that come from? That was from Sunday. That one is weird. <laughs> that one's not even from today's chat. Um, I think I need to come up with some better, um, some better stream tools to help. Um, but yeah, let's let's add a padding to the top here of a small amount, just so that we're not right up against the top. Um, so we can add padding to the top and we can do like a four. Um, and that should, yeah, there we go. So now as we add more things, um, we should be able to see, let's say we add like, I don't know, that many. Um, so as we look, that should be good. So the problem we've got is that our container's overflowing, um, and we don't want that. Um, so let's go to our main article component. Nope, it's our article container component. And inside of here, um, we want to add a height max. Um, so we want h uh, max screen right is that the right one no it might be 100 percent um Max height. Maybe I've got it backwards too. Yeah, it's max max dash h. Um, oh, and I don't want I don't want height because that's going to be the entire viewport. 
Um, and where we've got stuff at the top, that's just going to cause problems. Um, so we want the max height to be 100%. Um, so it's max dash H dash full. Um, and that should. Um, I also probably need to make a max height on this container element. Um, which is kind of an annoying thing, but um, got the article container. Now we want to look at the home page. Um, and we want um, max dash h dash full, and we want overflow dash y dash none, um, and overflow. Actually, I think we can just do overflow none here uh, because we don't want it overflowing in either direction, and that should just cut things off. No. So this class right here, um, this one has a max height of full. Let's do an overflow none on this one. It's not overflow none. What is it? Overflow hidden. That's what we want. I chose the wrong overflow. This is overflow hidden. Um, and there we go. Now we don't have any overflow. So now what we can do is we can go into the article container um, and we can say overflow um, y auto. Um, and that should, yeah. So now our our main article stays in place, or, or not our main, but our header stays in place, and the rest, you know, scrolls. Um, wow, that's bright. Um, what do we have? That's dark theme it's not super dark and that one's not too bad um that's kind of a solarized cyberpunk looks horrible valentine it's february um halloween ooh colors are kind of crazy but i'm okay with it um so yeah, this is kind of the main layout for our blog. Um, and I'm just, uh, I'm really curious about just the different kinds of, aqua doesn't look too bad. Forest doesn't look too bad either. Um, I'm kind of a fan of blues, but I'm not, I'm not too put off by aqua. Um, Lo-fi is probably a little bit bright. Pastel. Fantasy. Dang, there's a lot of these. Black is not bad. Hey, Kalel, this question is quite unrelated, but since you're working on a blog, it made me want to ask, have you ever worked with a headless CMS before, Strabby? Um, I haven't, actually. Well, that's not true. We use, con we use Contentful um, at um, Built. Um, but I don't have to work with it other than adding the stuff that Contentful gives us. Um, so, um, like, have I had to implement it or stuff like that? No. Uh, but I, you know, 
Uh, we just had an RFC go in um, where everything in the content of a page will now be served from Contentful. Um, and the reason for that is that, you know, in the future when we want to, um, you know, do I-1811, right? Or I-1811, I-18N, um, right? Internationalization. I-1811, that's hilarious. Um, but it, when, we, when we want to do I-18N, um, we, can, we can go and translate that, right? And then we can pass in, right? We want the, the Spanish, or we want the French, or the Chinese, or whatever it is, right? Um, and so we're, we're slowly moving that way. I just, I just wanted to implement one so I never have to upload blog content again. Um, integration still working with Angular. Um, as far as I know, it is. Um, we just had some people, and, and we're using Angular 17.2 at Bill. Um, and I just saw some merge requests go in um, for the first stuff that will come from our content backend. Um, so as far as I know, it is. Um, and if you go to like bill.com, you'll probably see some of the pages that are actually using it. Um, so um, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, definitely check it out. Um, but I, I know we're using it and I'm, I'm totally distracted. Coffee. That's, that's, we could, we could leave it on coffee and wake everybody up. Sunset, that's not bad. That one's not bad at all. Um, now we need to come up with, you know, kind of layouts for our articles. Um, I think the way I would like the main article to work is we would have kind of an image on the side here, um, and then we would have content inside of it. Um, and then the main blog articles would just have a title and then, um, you know, the blurb below it. That's kind of the way I think we can make this work. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want the card look. Um, and I think I might, but I think I might want to add like a, an alpha blend a little bit to these. Um, if we go take a look at color, right? Um, I think there's a way to add like a, a slight alpha. So like, um, and maybe I need to look at Daisy. So Daisy UI is the one that describes or that um, adds all of this and Inside of here, if we look at color, so we've got like the primary, right? Um, accents. So this is the content, that, right? And then secondary and neutral. Um, Oh, wow, I've got my stuff up loud. Uh, thank you, um, Brevity Dev. Thank you for the follow. Um, uh, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I was just, wow, that was loud. <laughs> I need to turn down my headphones. Um, but one thing I want to take a look at is YouTube. Um, I've got somebody watching on YouTube. So whoever you are, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Um, feel free to say hi in the chat. Yeah. What is my volume at? I guess I'll find out if I fixed it. Um, but what I'm curious about is... I can watch out both of it helps. <laughs> it, it, I'm not looking for numbers. Um, really, it's kind of an experiment. Uh, what, I, what I'm really looking for is when the stream is over, this will already be up on YouTube for everybody. 
Um, and then, you know, parts of it that um, people go back and watch and rewatch. Um, I can take those and take them into the YouTube studio. I can clip them and turn them into YouTube shorts, or I can get information from the YouTube videos, right? A lot more information than Twitch gives me about what people are watching. Um, and, you know, if people are watching certain content a lot, I can go create a YouTube video around it or, or something like that. Um, just, just to kind of help people for what they're actually looking for. Um, but more than anything, I've been so lazy about getting this stuff up onto YouTube that having, um, having the help will, uh, you know, it'll, it'll help people to be able to watch my content on YouTube. Um, but I'm curious, um, Arbitrary values. I don't want an arbitrary value. I thought there was a way um, to specify like an alpha. Um, yeah, the opacity scale. Oh, I could just add opacity to it. Um, We could do that. The other thing I'm curious about is like, um, and it's worth experimenting with, right? So here, if we do like a card here, ooh, thousand or a hundred bits. Thank you, brevity. <laughs> As a React dev in an Angular stream, dude, you are totally welcome here, um, and feel free to chime in with, with information about React. I don't care, right? I'm, I'm here to learn, um, but thank you for showing up, man. It, it means a lot. Um, you know, I have no problems with React. Um, so let's see, here in the, um, we're using the border secondary here, right? Um, I wonder, can I do like border secondary 200? That should be like a, a, a really, really dark version. like. Um, 500 is the light version, and then it, it gets darker the lower this number gets, and lighter the higher it gets. Um, so if we go take a look, yeah, primary 200 is now a white color. Um, and probably the easiest way to, way to see it is... Um, oh, did I break it? Oof. No, I didn't. Um, I was just re reloading. Okay, so... 200 is probably too light, um, but like if we did like a 300, and maybe these colors aren't defined, and that's why we're getting this. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're defined. Um, but what we can do is we can do opacity um, and say like 85% uh, or 85. Um, the main reason I don't like to do opacity is that it's doing an alpha blend. Um, is that really like if I if I inspect this um, the border? So you see, and it's hard to see right here, but the TW border opacity. So it's using that border opacity, and where is that coming from? If we look here, border spacing. We can search for border. There isn't any border opacity. Um, but the other thing I'm not seeing is Oh, no, there it is. There's my opacity at 85%. Oh, it's making the whole thing. I don't like that. Um, is there a border opacity? Border opacity. Um, uh, 
Oh, you use the slash on it. That's what I was thinking. The slash 50 sets it at 50% opacity. Um, so if we go here and we go order secondary slash um, 0.65, right? Like 65% opacity. Um, and we should see... Um, well, first let's turn off the grid so we can see it. But our main article... Oh, there it is. There's the 0.65. So we are getting that 0.65. Um, and we can we can turn down the oh that's way too much. Um, so like you know if we went to forty five, um, you can see that it's getting a little bit lighter, um, and twenty five. So you can do stuff this way. I, I don't like opacity to do that um, because depending on the color behind it. Um, like these light themes, I guess they look okay. Um, but let's get like, I don't know. It, it becomes, it can become much more difficult to see it. Like this gray, I don't know. Um, maybe it's okay. Right? Um, I have to think about that. And maybe we won't use a border anyway. I was thinking about rounding the corners just a little bit, giving it a border radius. Um, it just feels a little bit generic to use cards here. Um, it would be nice to use like the image to show the size and then have the title and then the stuff there. And then here we just have the title and the stuff and that. And then when we hover, maybe we can give it a border. Maybe that's the way to go. We'll have to think about it. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, but so I like to use like HSL colors, right? Because um, if I want like a lighter color, I can adjust the lightness on the HSL. Um, yeah, dev is the design is the most frustrating part of that, especially when I'm not a designer myself and my wife is, and she looks at the stuff I do and goes, oh yeah, you did that, didn't you? Um, <laughs> JS is JS. Anything with longevity is fine with me. There you go. I love that one. Um, and now I can no longer... This is crazy. What is going on here? I I need to stop using this these Streamlabs tools. They're just they don't they work off and on. Um, oh, that's because I'm in my browser. Um, JS is JS. Anything with longevity is fine. There we go. I like that one. Um, you can use shadows as false borders. Yeah. Um, the downside to shadows is that shadows can actually hurt your render, right? Um, and that's that's the other like when we get into design and stuff like that, like you're saying, um, it's crazy to think that the stuff that you do um, can hurt. Like a drop shadow can hurt your render, so. Um, be careful about your drop shadows. They they might be you know hurting your FPS, but it's not always guaranteed either. Um, yeah, HSL works a lot better with um, accessibility, a lot easier to work with. Exactly, um, and the um, and it depends on your audience too. Exactly, very very true. Um, brevity. Um, excellent comments from our React from our React viewer. Very very good comments. Um, the 
the colors that they use here, these OKLCH, um, I didn't know about them until I started reading about what they were. Um, we started looking into these a bit at work. Um, and the OKLCH color space um, is um, so here's a crazy thing, right? Um, there is a problem with HSL, and can I swap this to a dark theme? Um, I don't see where to swap this to a dark theme. I'm sorry about that, but um, so in OKLCH, um, OK comes from the OK Labs, and OK Labs do a lot of um, they do a lot of accessibility testing, right? The L is the the perceived lightness of the color. The C is the chroma, um, and the H is the hue angle. Um, and then you can also add the you know the alpha, the opacity. Um, this is very, very similar to HSL. If you flip it around, this is pretty much HSL, right? LCH is HSL in reverse, um, but they're using chroma instead of saturation. Um, and so, you know, the, it, it's basically HSL in reverse. The crazy thing about LCH um, is that if you go look, Basically, there are colors that um, LCH takes out because they don't contrast well and people can't really see them. Um, yeah, here's here's what it was. So like HSL does really really well, right? Um, it uses hue, saturation, and lightness, um, but like they're saying here, it's a cylindrical color space. And what that means is that like, once you get to colors here that people can't see, like in this area here, HSL takes the color below it and stretches it. So it's the same color. So this stuff here is the same color from the border all the way up. Um, and you know, these gaps here are the same way. And you can kind of see that here in the green um, and in the purple where you can kind of see that there's some weirdness going on there, right? Um, there's a weird bump in here. Um, and the, the problem is, is that the lightness and the darkness make it difficult, um, and they don't play well with accessibility. Um, and so HSL clips out a whole bunch of color space. Um, or o OKLCH does, because it's based on OK Labs. HSL doesn't, um, which means that HSL will give you a color, even if the color you specify isn't valid. OKLCH okay, won't. Um, and so um, it, it winds up doing some interesting things. So you can see like the HSL values, the, the contrasts can get messed up, right? Um, as you're adjusting lightness and things like that. Um, and so it, you know, it, it makes a difference. But um, the other thing um, that, yeah, HSL is bad for color modifications. Um, um, yeah, and OKLCH OK, doesn't deform the space. Um, but these are the, this is the OK lab that OKLCH OK, was based on. Um, but there's a whole bunch of information here. If you guys are really interested in colors and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. Sites not respecting your browser preferences is frustrating. And that's one of the things that we need to build into this blog, too. Um, it, well, and it, I think it is built in a little bit. If we take a look. Um, We've got the data theme dim, but yeah, see, we can see that um, Daisy has the built-in, hey, if you prefer color scheme dark, then we're going to give you these colors, right? Um, if you prefer color scheme light, then we'll give you these colors. Um, and so as you swap your browser, because I've specifically chosen a theme, I'm overriding it. 
But if I took the theme out, um, then it would respect my browser stuff. Um, yeah, and fall back to HSL, you're doing more good than bad. No problem, man. Um, I'm glad I'm glad it helped out. And um, you know, we, we kind of got onto this tangent because alpha blending colors, while it does appear to do what you want, it's not really what you want. Um, if you want a lighter color, using something like OKLCH or HSL is better because you know if your if your lightness is you know 50%, you could bump it up to like 65%, and now you've got a lighter color. Um, and, and we can see that in um, well, we we can demonstrate that, right? Um, let's go into our main article, and, and inside of here, we can just add. Um, we'll just add like a div. We could say class equals, um, and we'll do, we'll say this is a block. We'll give it a height of 16. I think we can do, I, I think you can do height width 16. I think that works. Um, and then here we'll just do BG, and here we'll just do an HSL. And um, so HSL zero is red, um, one twenty is blue, and two forty or one twenty is green, and two forty is blue. I like blue, so we're going to go two forty. Um, we're going to give it a saturation of we'll, we'll do a hundred percent, right? Um, and we'll give it a lightness of fifty. We're going to stick right in the middle. Um, so this is this is our first div, right? So if we go take a look, um, did it not? Where's my inspect here? Right there. Here's my main article. Oh, there's my div. That height. Height width must not work. Um, I know I saw something on Twitter about that, but we're going to do a height of 16 and a width of 16, right? And if we go take a look now, um, where is it? I need to give it a non-breaking space inside of it to show it. It's in there. My color's not there. Um, if I do background um, blue, there it is. So my HSL color isn't working. Um, can I not do an HSL color in... Um, Tailwind, color, and arbitrary values. Can I not do HSL and arbitrary values in That's fine. We don't have to do that. Um, because we're because we're using analog, we can just add a style. Um, and here we do lang equals. We're just going to do CSS. Um, and inside of here, we're going to give ourselves um, a host pseudo selector. Um, and we'll do um, dash dash um, middle color. Um, and we're going to give it that HSL 240, 50. Um, and here we should be able to now just do dash dash middle color. 
there we go. Um, and then we'll do darker um, color. And yeah, it's already doing it for us, right? So um, the darker color, um, Copilot understood that lightness is lightness. So this is the same hue. It's, it's the same value tone of color. We're doing the same saturation, but we're giving it just a slight variation in darker. Um, and then the lighter will do 75. Um, and so then we can just come here and we can do, um, well, we'll do, we'll leave the middle in the middle um, and we'll do darker and lighter. Um, and this is why um, you should prefer HSL. Um, so now if we come back, are you kidding? Where are my divs? Look at that, it's right there. But does it know what darker color is? Um, It doesn't understand my host pseudo selector. I think. Um, not fully supported. Yeah, take browser prep first. Yep. What happens if you store HS, the HSL to a CSS custom prop? That's what I'm doing. Didn't know you're going to go that route. Time to make a PR to try root. I can try root. I don't know if it's going to let me do root here. Um, and I'm not sure if my style is set up right. Um, that's the other thing here. Um, so yeah, root didn't work either. Um, if we go take a look again in the main article, we can see that they're here. Um, so the other the other thing we can do, um, we can. Why doesn't that work? Like that CSS variable should be there. Um, but we could do like host. Um, no, that's. If we're going to, we could do like dot um, darker. Um, and here we can just do background color that. Um, and we can. Move our host up above. So here, instead of that, I should be able to just go darker here. Um, and this should be mid. And this one we'll call lighter. Um, and so now I should just be able to take these and copy them down and go mid and lighter. And this one should be middle color. And this one should be lighter color. Let's see if that works. No. Okay. So since that doesn't work, then we just go here and we just go boom. And I may have my style. It, maybe it's styles. Um, let's try that. Instead of a style, let's try styles. 
that work? So here, we can see that, that they're there. And we look at this div, we can see it's trying to grab darker color. Uh, inline it, yeah, I could. Mid midler. <laughs> somebody would, somebody would say that on my PR. I know they would. Um, oh, did I? What did I do here? Where did my styles go? Well, for one thing, we can go take a look at um, inside of here, we can take a look and see if they've got a style block. Um, so like, we can go take a look at this app component.analog file. Um, and so let's go, let's go back to the code. It looks like it's in apps ng app, apps. Inside of here, there's an ng app. Um, inside of here, there's a source app pages. Um, let's look at the home page, just a template about page a script and a template posts as a whole bunch of stuff script template um it it oh it's just style with no language on it so style no language and here we'll grab a host pseudo selector and we'll say again middle or we'll say yeah middle color is HSL um, and we did 240, 150 um, and then lighter is 75 and then darker is that and we we should be good. So now if we go take a look. There we go. Um, and so these are all the same blue. This this blue right here with the 50 lightness is uh, the same thing as if you said HTML blue. Um, this one with 25 is a darker shade of, you know, so it's the same hue, but it's got um, less white in it. Um, that's the way to think of it. Um, when, when you talk about the L value, the lightness value, um, what you're really doing is mixing white into the color. Um, and so um, it's, it's the percentage of that color plus, um, you know, plus lightness. Um, I, it's not really 100% that. Because if we went zero here, this would be black. Um, and if we went 100 here, it would be completely white. Um, but that's kind of a way to think of it, right? Like you're mixing um, more white or more black from the 50% mark. That's probably the better way to call it, right? So at the 50% mark, if you go above 50%, you're adding more white to the color. Um, and that's why this is uh, you know, turning kind of purplish because it, it's much much more white and if we got higher and higher values um but this way it's less uh, it, you're adding more black so it's getting darker and darker until zero is all the way black and this way 100 is all the way light white right um so these are your you know these are your um your your lightness values but the the 
good thing about this is that you're not using alphas to determine this. And so your background's not going to change these colors. Um, so if the background suddenly became very bright white, this color would change because, well, we don't have the alpha on it anymore, I don't think. Maybe we do. But if you alpha blend a color, the background affects the, the color. Um, whereas with HSL, by, adding, by changing the L value, you stay within the same hue, but you know, you're moving up and down the lightness scale, which is a nice way to give you nice palettes, right? So you can give yourself like nice outlines and contrasts and things like that um, fairly, fairly, or fairly easily. Um, and that's the, that's, that's the power of an HSL color. Um, and I think, I think that's where I'm going to end for the day. Um, but yeah, I, I had the style messed up and that's why it wasn't working. But, you know, um, now we've got our CSS variables, we're using them. Um, yeah, I think that's a good place to call it for the night. Uh, thank you everybody for joining. Um, thank you for the amazing comments from our React dev. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, Maybe maybe we'll convert you. Maybe you'll convert us, but I doubt either will happen. Um, yeah, you too. You have a great night. Um, you guys have a great rest of your evening. Um, I'll be back on Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, so two hours before now. Um, and we'll pick this up again, right? Um, we're kind of in a design phase looking at how we want things to look, um, but we're working with .analog files. Um, so... There's a lot.